right. Thank you guys for coming out. Make some noise for yourselves. <laughs> oh, that failed. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're not on my side. Uh, Queenie, bitch, it's great to be battling Queenie. Uh, Queenie's been really busy lately, which is weird because the Republican National Convention was a while ago. But um, uh, I've, Queenie's been making a lot of... Uh, uh, all right, keep doing that, you fucking hack. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm so annoyed by now, but... Uh, I've been, well, Queenie's been making a lot of makeup tutorials. Shows you how to put on makeup, and I watched one of them all the way till the end. You know what I learned? Sometimes so makeup doesn't... One. Sorry, are we doing this? I'm sorry. Okay. So we, I'm sorry. What I learned from watching your dog shit makeup tutorials <laughs> was that sometimes makeup doesn't work, okay? I've seen fish with better eyebrows than Queenie Bitch, okay? I don't mean to be offensive, but I wouldn't fuck Queenie with Queenie's dick, okay? That's... All right, try to let me finish the fucking joke next time, but... You would only be so lucky to fuck me with my own penis. Um, here's the thing. I want to. I want to start off this and just say, like, look, I'm not here to disparage his character. Okay, that's not me. That's not what I do. Okay, but saying that, uh, Pat Bullduck is a bad person. Okay, and the reason for that, I've pulled all of his ex-girlfriends. It turns out the only thing he ever bought for them was the abortion they didn't want. Right? They're just like, I'm pregnant. He's just like, I'll pay for it. And he's just like, No, I want to keep it. It's like, Look, I'm a feminist. You can be a single mother if you want to. That joke was longer than that dead baby's life, but, uh... <laughs> yes. Unless an abortion costs $47, I've never paid for one, but, uh, it's literally what's in my checking account right now. All right, let's let each other get through these here. Uh, Queenie is, uh, great. Queenie's about to actually, uh, start a one-woman show. Um, they haven't, they, yeah, they haven't cast a woman yet, but, uh, it's, uh, pretty good. Um, I do think once you start acting, you should do, adopt a different stage name. Instead of Queenie Bitch, uh, it, for acting, it should be uh, Trainee Trejo. Don't you think? I mean, with a... oh. I, mean, I was really hoping you yes. were. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this night Man, is do crazy. they still kick drunk bitches out of comedy shows? Or is that a... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, um, fuck you too, you fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you more than... I like Queenie. I detest you more than... I have to test you more than my father who raped me, but, uh... Get her the fuck out, you fucking... Sit her in the back, I don't know. Well, welcome. No, you have. You just didn't know it, but, uh... Okay, Sorry, I'm, go ahead. I'm my very bad. uncomfortable on I this know. stage. Well, she flipped me off and said, I love you. She's in front row, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pat is in his late 30s, which is brave. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what age you are. I just know you look unwell. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, the first time I'm, I saw Queenie Bitch, I thought to myself, oh, okay, I guess Michelle Obama doesn't have a dick. Because uh, if Michelle Obama has a dick, then Queenie has 17 dicks. That's... <laughs> She doesn't need one. Hey, God, if you guys aren't on stage, shut the fuck up. Yeah, this is a fucking roast battle, you pussies, okay? Shut up. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, It'll get better then. Shut up. (laughs) Should we just go with her? What do you think? Should we just destroy this fucking dumb piece of shit? Then get better. All right, God. Hey, just friends. That's really really close, right? Hey, Pat's, Pat's parents are pro-choice. Uh, give it up for them. Uh, they were pro-life, but you see what happened. That's true. I suck. Uh, <laughs> going to a lot of women in this audience, but... Um, uh, Queenie, I don't know what your style is. It kind of have, like, other than you have Mike Tyson's uh, face tattoo on your bare midriff, but... Uh, <laughs> You have kind of a Nightmare Before Christmas vibe, which the real Nightmare Before Christmas is when you text your dad and tell him that you're coming to Christmas. He's, he's like, hide the mistletoe. Queenie will be making out with a sneaker. I don't, I don't trust him around the eggnog. Pat's what shows up when you say pedophile three times in a mirror. <laughs> That's true, because I was babysitting the whole time. You know what I mean? I just come out from behind him. It's good. I don't know if you guys know this, in the 70s, they actually used electroshock therapy on gay people as like gay conversion therapy. And then they tried that on Queenie and Chernobyl happened. So it was kind of, uh, 
a reverse gay. I was technically alive. I'm older than I look. <laughs> Pat is in a long-term relationship, which I think is commendable. Uh, he's in a long-term relationship with looking like a douchebag. Okay. You know, he really does look like the only reason he said yes to this was to ask me to smile more. <laughs> no, you have a great look. I think you look like a samurai whose first principle is dishonoring your father. But. Uh, <laughs> Queenie is everything that's wrong with the world right now. J JK, JK, Rowling said that. So uh, it was, uh, not me, that was a quote from JK, right? I was, Queenie knows all about Hogwarts. She had three of them removed last week at the free clinic, so I was, uh, Uh, I wanna I wanna take a second and uh, talk about the differences between us because when you see us together, I think you probably think we're basically the same person. Um, but there there are differences. One of us is a makeup artist, the other has hypertension. Yes. One of us is a comedian, the other is an alcoholic. We're both single. We do have that in common, but for very different reasons. For me, it's because I fall in between gender norms. For him, it's a court order. Very nice. No, you are, you are, yes, sorry. You are a great makeup artist. I, but too bad you could never do that with your Catholic grandmother. But, uh, no. <laughs> well, one really right-wing guy back there. I like that. Uh, uh, I do want to congratulate Queenie on her victory at the uh, Chicago Female Comedians one-on-one -on -one basketball tournament. It was an absolute... <laughs> It was an absolute blowout this year. Not even close. Nobody, nobody could touch Queenie, mostly because they thought she had AIDS. But uh, that's right. What I'm <laughs> it was herpes, obviously. Um, it's kind of the theme of the night, if you haven't noticed. Um, one thing about uh, Pat is uh, he has a mental disorder. Okay? I don't know what it is, but look at him. It has to be something. Right. Everyone looks at us and is just like, trans people have mental disorders, but at least my pants fit. <laughs> Do these really not fit? Fine. All right, give it up for them, everybody. Oh, my God. Wow. That went off the rails pretty quickly. I liked it. I liked it. It was like a PTA meeting where you were trying to make sure that she doesn't read to the kids. Um, <laughs> That's true. That's very true. I like it. Give it up for them one more time. Close out the show. Doing a great job. Great job. Don't get stabbed later. Brandon, let me get your thoughts. What did you think of what happened? No, it got weird. Uh, no, I love both of you guys. Uh, fantastic. Pat, uh, I know Pat. It, Pat's the guy that would drink two beers, hook up with Queenie, and be like, I was so wasted last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got me. <laughs> and Queenie, I love Queenie. I'm glad you could take the night off from Area 51. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I love both of you guys. That was fantastic. I think Pat, but I do think Pat beat three women in that round, if I count right. But I gotta give it to Pat. Yeah, I think Pat got it. Hell yeah. Pat gets one vote. All right, the booing women haven't started yet. We'll see what happens. Max, what do you think? Chris, I think uh, next show you should get these two drunk girls, get them to get on stage, yeah. give them the microphones, and then we stone them. Um, I think that would solve a lot of problems. I don't even care about the roast. I'm so ready to go home. This is getting nuts. Um, I think Pat won. That was fun. All right, Katie, what's up? All right, Pat wins the battle. Give it up for Pat. Katie, what did you think of the battle? Okay, give it up for a Republican propaganda. <laughs> It's so funny, because I know you guys love each other, and you're going to touch tits by the end of the night. And I feel like when you guys fuck, it's going to be like when the Avatar tails touch and it glows. <laughs> That's what I imagine. No, that was too, that was great, guys. You really held your own when they got even the rowdiest. My favorite part is when you somehow united together yeah. to go one person yeah. in the crowd. Uh, but God damn it, Pat, the, the Chernobyl bit, the J.K. Rowling, uh, it was, uh, Queenie's pedophilia joke was great. I'm just, 
This, uh, if, if anyone puts this out of context, like, that's terrible. <laughs> this was so much fun. I think in the end, Pat won. Uh, but yeah, give it up for them. They did awesome. Wow, give it up for Queenie, back for the millionth time, one of the absolute OGs. Dude, that was a, what a wild kind of crazy. Is it fun? That, you know what's funny? Uh, being up there, we typically don't, maybe your experience is different, we don't get that many hecklers during the actual battles. That's, that's not typically what happens, but we did have it this time. It really kind of messes with the flow. You had a great set regardless, but what was it like being up in a battle after you've been in so many where the dynamic is now the audience is like interrupting jokes and premises? Um, the only word you have for it is uncomfortable. <laughs> At a certain point, I was just kind of like, okay, do I leave? What do I do? Because I couldn't see the people. So it was like, they're all in shadow, except for the girl, he was already yelling. So at a certain point, I'm just like, they'll get to me eventually. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, here's the, what has been a thing you've been f with this show since the beginning. I mean, literally one of our first few shows since you started doing roast battles and you still stuck through it the whole time. What has been the biggest change that you've seen from a performer perspective as a roaster throughout your time doing it as a tenured battler? Um, I feel like the roasters are getting better. I think this show is kind of training Chicago comics to do this kind of stuff. So I think the talent is getting better and people who are just kind of going and trying it out are like actually taking it a little more seriously now. So I think the show just rose in quality for those reasons. Well, we love having you as always. You look great. I love this, whatever that fishnet thing. We're going to have sex later. It's going to be pretty cool. Great set as always. Fucking, fucking weird one tonight, everybody.